Hello everybody, welcome back to wow to learn Last time we completed the tutorial mission on parallel calculations, and now the, our next task could be sales prediction, and since it branches off from parallel calculations, I'm assuming this will require some parallel calculations. Sales prediction, good afternoon. We've just bought a stock of trees for the holidays. Friends say that you can calculate the peak demand period for them. Please help us. Okay, uh, seems pretty standard. It's just red, green, blue, and then just green, and no parallel calculations. You don't get to parallelize anything. So, okay. Uh, we're only allowed one node for the gold medal. So, we require 100% accuracy. This one must get green. Wow. Okay, so we know about feeding back. We know for a fact that just uh, using this node alone is not going to work no matter what we set it to, even if we set it to green. Um, this is going to get some of the blue. Or actually, you know what? Why don't we just do any and green? That way, the green ones will be evenly split between the two sides and Everything else will only go to stream one. Test. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess I made it too complicated in my mind. Uh, okay. That was a little bit easier than I expected. I don't know why the mission was placed all the way here, but okay, sure. Alien artifact. Good day. Our group is working on finding an ancient artifact called Terseract. It is a very unstable element which radiates energy in different specters. Specters, huh? We have almost found out how to use its power to benefit humankind, but we need a smart algorithm that will separate and direct the flows of energy correctly. Revolution in energetics is just around the corner, my friend. Okay, we have four streams now. We have a balancer and the regular decision tree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's just look at the outputs required. This one takes all of them. This one, everything except green. This one, everything except red. And this one, all of them. And they all require different numbers. Let's see, 17, 12, that's 29 plus. Uh, 21 over here, it's 50. Okay, we have a little bit of surplus that we can play with. So yeah, one thing is, now that we can use balancers, I believe balancers are very, very quick. So if we can use balancers, they do count as a node. But it seems like we can trade off the time required for the server cost. So if we have a solution but it happens to be a little bit too slow, then we can add a balancer into it to make it faster at the cost of um, getting less uh, cat bucks at the end. That's something to consider. They all require 100% accuracy, so we need to accurately filter out certain colors. Okay, so how about... Three nodes, so how about just this? Your standard split. I think this will be the most, well, really the only thing we can do to split one input into four outputs, and then we just need to assign the right colors here. Uh, and this one could also be replaced with a balancer if needed, but uh, I guess I'll decide if I need that later. How 
How about I just do any and green. That way we'll get all the green ones over here and then we'll do the same thing except do any and blue so that all the red ones will do any any so that they get split evenly and then this one gets all the blue ones. Maybe that's not a good idea. Let's give it the red because we have more red than blue so we want more of the red color to come in here. Seven and 14, 17 and 12. So these two actually require more. Let's just test it. I'm thinking about it too much. I'll see what happens. Yeah, so the 12 is filling up really, really slowly. And that's the main concern here. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Oh, uh, yeah, we don't need to do that. Okay, I'm gonna change this to any, any, so all of the colors can go in here and then all of the colors get evenly split between these two. And then we have this one, which I'm gonna do red and green. Uh, so the red come in here, the green come in here, and then the remaining blues will be evenly split between the two. Let's try that. Okay, they're doing a little bit better. This one is getting not so much success. Uh, we have a success, but no gold medal. Okay, so as I said, if we need it to be faster, we can replace it with a balancer. So that does the same thing as in any any decision tree, it just splits evenly. Or actually it doesn't split evenly. Well, in this case, uh, because we have the same uh, processing on both branches, it is going to split evenly. But uh, let's say this one is faster than the other, then the balancer is actually going to send more this way. Uh, let's try it. Whoa, okay, that's pretty fast. Okay, yep, gold medal, release. Okay, next one, new production. New production, the best clothes. Top of the morning to you from Zimaletto Outfits. We're trying to optimize our production lines and we need a system that would distribute textile by material and send them to respective conveyors in equal amounts. We believe that you could nail this job, so we look forward to hearing back from you. Okay. We have all the shapes, all the shapes everywhere, except this one that doesn't accept squares. And then in terms of number of outputs, the last one requires approximately twice as many as everybody else. We're allowed four nodes, and we have a bunch of, uh, just a bunch of general shapes. I'm thinking there's no particular reason to divide them, because we don't need anything that specifically takes circles and squares anywhere. So I'm thinking just merge them and then use a balancer for whatever uh, to split them again relatively evenly later on. Okay, and then decision tree. We definitely need a decision tree at some point to filter out the um, squares. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna filter out the squares versus anything. The squares go, oh no, the squares go some, oh wait. We want one without squares, huh? If I could remember how to do that, or we can just take all the circles. All the circles or all the triangles? All the circles, we have a lot more circles than triangles. So maybe we take all the circles and we feed them over here. If it's not a circle, then we are getting... I'm thinking feed them... I'm thinking 
can feed them over here because this one only requires 13, which is less than everybody else. And because we are splitting all the... Oh, no, 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 no. That's not true. Okay, let me just uh, set this up and then reason about it. Okay, so what we're looking for is something like this right at the end. But then, so the balancer is going to distribute them evenly. So 50% of them come over here, 50% of them come over here. And then this is going to split again evenly. So this one gets a quarter, this one gets a quarter. This one divides not evenly though. This one gets, because um, only circles go this way, this is going to get less than a quarter and this one's going to get more than a quarter. So we want more than a quarter to go to 28. And then these two, because they require nearly the same number, I'm going to take each 25%. I kind of doubt this is going to be fast enough, but we can try it. Oh, this is very slow. Yeah, no, we're not getting nearly enough circles and stuff. So that does not work. Okay. So, um, if we're not getting enough circles, then maybe we want to shuffle some triangles over here too. It seems like these two were filling up pretty good. So I think out of the remaining ones, I'm going to distribute these evenly. So both circles and triangles get filtered out and sent over here. So that hopefully gets enough this time. The remaining, everything that's not a circle or um, everything plus everything else plus half of the circles go in here. And then out of everything else that's not a triangle, they get split evenly and go into the two output streams that require lower numbers. Let's try that. Yeah, no, this is going extremely slowly. Yeah, this is not even close. What is going on? There are not enough triangles, just not enough triangles. Okay, let's delete this all. Delete all this, because I think we're doing this wrong. Ah, okay, here's another idea. What if we do, uh, maybe merging the two inputs is not a good idea. So here we can actually split evenly. All the circles going here, uh, out of 20 of them, We are going to get enough um, circles in here, but I'm looking at the time that takes a second to process each one, and uh, if we get 20 circles, we're going to need about 40 seconds, at least. And we only have 23 seconds available, so we kind of want... a balancer to do something. balancer to distribute these two evenly, circle and square. So all the circles go in here. All the squares, where do we want it to go? They have 38 squares. Since we have... Okay. Uh, no. We're gonna get twice as many as there are here. this directly. Thinking we're going to process out of 20 circles, 
20 circles are going to be split among these two branches and they're going to merge over here 15 so we pretty much have to process all of these we need to process uh, three quarters of input stream one to finish the circles and by then we would have processed about 30 squares already and so if we distribute the squares evenly between these the, they should have the right number of squares as well eh, test you shouldn't beat it shouldn't be sending data from input output you know <laughs> come on let's sort some data oh it wouldn't even let me do that okay them is okay too because if we do circle and square on top then it is effectively going to do circle and triangle it will have all the circles plus some of the triangles right and then the bottom lane will have all the squares plus some of the triangles as well but we're not really concerned about that and if that's the case then we don't even need to necessarily care about that. Uh, we could just do any, any, and try to distribute them evenly. Let's test it. No, this is way too slow. So yeah, okay, I forgot. We need, we need uh, two decision trees both to be feeding in here to be able to make this number uh, 15, oops, I want the gold, uh, 15 circles within 23 seconds. So we need almost one every second. here this one goes here and then we will distribute the outputs relatively evenly over here okay um, circles and okay first of all balancer is going to send some of the inputs this way circles and triangles going here circles and squares going here another balancer this decision tree is going to send some circles over here and triangles and some squares and triangles over here. These all require relatively low numbers. This one that requires the highest number, we have two balancers which are very fast in the way. So most of the outputs, because this route is much faster than the other routes, it's going to get more inputs coming through here. This one was being way too slow uh, because uh, the balancer doesn't have anything stopping it. Okay, I think I have a pretty good idea of what's going on now. Okay, so in our previous trials, we have established that we need two decision trees processing in parallel and feeding the results into the circle because if it was just one decision tree, there just isn't enough time to get 15 circles within 23 seconds. So we need two of these in parallel and also we cannot uh, we cannot do something like this we cannot merge the inputs together or you know send both of the inputs into the two decision trees we cannot have both of our input streams go into both decision trees because again uh, we need uh, what was it like 50 uh, no 30 plus 41 we need 71 items within 23 seconds, and there's no way the two decision trees can handle that much output. 
so we absolutely need one uh, going into either a balancer or yeah, going into a balancer because we can't connect it directly to an output either. And then the other one needs to go into a balancer that divides it into two decision trees. Okay, so um, let's test this. So we have a circle and square, circle and square, let's divide the two. I'm going to put the square into the output that requires less output. And then this balancer can go here. Let's see how that goes. Okay, looks like the circles, this one is too slow. Yeah. Um, okay, so circle triangles is too slow. That means we're not getting enough circles. Uh, the way to fix that is maybe we swap these two so that these circles, yeah, we have more circles from this side coming in. So, and we need to divide it a little bit differently. Uh, no, this is good. Circle and square, circle and square. So this is going to get circle and some of the triangles. Let's try that. Okay, now this one's filling way too slowly. Yeah, this is too slow. Okay, uh, what if we send more output this way? What if we take all of the outputs from one of the decision trees and send it to this output stream? Alright, <laughs> yeah. Okay, this was pretty good. A lot of possible combinations, a lot of uh, balancing required, so uh, wasn't so obvious. We needed to make sure we get the right number of outputs, right number of inputs, uh, divide them in the correct way to make sure we get all the required numbers of outputs within the allocated time. So that was that was a good one. Okay, let's do large parallel calculations. Hey, our parallelization system broke after the last Doors OS upgrade. Door, oh yeah, it's a, okay, play on Windows. Can you fix it? It's a very big system, be careful. Deep news, the darkest years of machine learning. In 1969, Seymour Papert and Mar Marvin Lee Minsky wrote a book called Perceptrons. In this book, they spoke about math constraints of the first perceptrons, the XOR problem. This book has shifted the scientific interest and funds distribution from the US government organizations, slowing down the progression of machine learning for almost 30 years. The expanded version of the book was released in 1987, containing chapters that disprove the statements from the critical remarks made since 1969. Oh, uh, really? Why is this a thing? I mean, if they all take the same output and they all require the same numbers, then why don't we just do this? Is there some trick? I'm expecting some trick, so let's see why this doesn't work. Uh, okay, <laughs> it does work. I'll take it, I guess? That was a lot easier than I expected. Oh, I guess, okay. Because we did all the hard missions over here. This is the task right after parallel calculations. So I guess they just expanded that a little bit more. Okay. Secret information. Good day to you. We are a secret military organization. Our code name is Protoss. Is that a StarCraft reference? Everything you are going to read further is classified. Our analysts are sending operatives into various war zones. An escalation of conflict with the enemy, enemy Zerg and Terran, has recently occurred. We are indeed, or are in need of a self-learning algorithm capable of sending dedicated units to respective parts of the battlefield. Okay. Um. Yeah, that seems like our regular decision tree. Thirty and ninety. Okay, we need 30, this takes 0.3 seconds, 
So yeah, I think we have time to classify all of those. I mean, obviously not the 90, but um, so probably, yeah, we have to put a balancer here. I don't think this is going to work because uh, a balancer is going to send to output stream three way too quickly and it's going to get stuck on decision tree color. Yeah, that's what I expected. So let's do another decision tree that literally does not do anything but send all its outputs over here. We're gonna send uh, that output over here too. Test. Nope. Um, okay, we need to increase the output over here a little bit. So rather than red any, how about red and green? That way the side receives some of the Blue. Oh, we don't have a lot of blue. That's probably not going to work. Uh, let's do red any over here. Let's try that. Okay. I think we barely made it. Yeah, one second left to go. Awesome. Can we do one more mission? Sure, why not? Cyber Initiative. Greetings, our company Cyber Initiative is into manufacturing androids. Our production lines are fully robotized. The only function which is still performed by human workers is logistics. We are shipping our androids to the government, military companies, etc. We would like to automate this process with an algorithm that will distribute androids depending on their characteristics. Glory to the robots. Okay. First two will receive all the colors. This one only wants red. This one only wants blue. And we have expert system available to us. I wonder if that's gonna be significant for output stream three. Although we already know we can replace an expert system with two decision trees and uh, it's faster that way. And we're allowed seven nodes, so I don't think we should use an expert system. I don't think we'll be strapped for nodes. Okay, so first of all, we definitely want a balancer. Or do we? Okay, hold on. Let's just try to get the outputs working. Decision tree. So let's try to get the only red. So we do red, blue, followed by red, green. Now, okay, if we do this, this is gonna get red and green, and then red and green would be a perfect split. Green can go up here because this one requires more, more than the other one. And then red, blue on the blue side blue side is going to have a mixture of green and blue. So we, again, we have green and blue. Blue can go over here, and then green can go over here. We have 36 seconds. That means we can process about 90, 100 items, which seems to be enough time. 34, 16, that's 50, yeah. About 100 items. Of course we need something over here as well. We don't need all of the... red and green though. So all of the red over here is sort of a waste because we only need 27 and we have 40 of them. Uh, I think the main problem is we only have 110 inputs and we require uh, 90 something outputs so we can't really waste any we can't really stuff you know can't afford to put 40 red into the 27 outputs because that would waste too many and there's it won't be enough inputs for everybody else okay I think I got it. So this one took me a while. It took me about an hour of thinking. 
uh, my strategy is to, to make this a numbers game, right? Because as I mentioned before, we have 110 total inputs and we require, I believe, 98 total outputs. So our margins are very small. We cannot afford to put too many extra items into any one of the outputs because otherwise we won't have enough items for the remaining outputs. So it's all about balancing and getting exactly the right number fed into each output stream. So uh, what I figured was I'm going to start with a balancer. This way, if we start with 40, 10, and 60, on each output of the balancer, we're going to have 20 red, 5 green, and 30 blue. And then if we split it one more time, this is going to have 10 red, about 2 green, 2 or 3 greens, and 15 blue, right? Okay, so if we combine the 10 red and 15 blue coming out of here, that gives us 25 outputs of red and green, uh, of red and blue, I mean, and that will be approximately right for output screen number four. So we're gonna use the standard decision tree trick to filter out the green, because we don't want green in our output here. We're gonna put red and blue into our output stream number four. Okay. And then out of the remaining ones, we're going to have out of this output and this output here, together we're gonna to have 30 red total. And the 30 red total goes into output stream number three because we want 27 and 30 is just about the right number. So we're going to do that trick again. So output decision tree, we're going to filter out all the red this time. Blue. Okay, so this goes in here, goes in here. Red, and the same thing with the other balancer. So blue, red. Okay, and because we've hit our node limit, uh, we can't put another decision tree here because then we're not going to get the gold medal anymore. But we can, what we can do is combine the processing of these two uh, into the same decision tree that filters out green. So the reason I'm not doing also combining these two, because if you look at these two, they are also doing the same, same kind of uh, filtering. The reason I'm not combining these two is because we have a pretty significant amount of green, uh, blue items. So. I believe these two processing in parallel is going to be more efficient. That's why we're not combining these two. But once we get to the green stage, there aren't that many green items to filter out. So it's okay to combine them. And then we send all the output to output screen number three, which is going to be our 30 red. So that takes care of three and four. What we have remaining is out of here, we're going to have 30 blue. So we're going to put the 30 blue in here, and then we're going to shuffle some of the remaining green items in here as well. So 30 blue plus a small number of green items. We only have 10 total, so we're going to split some of them into output stream number one, uh, zero. And then uh, the remaining blue items, that's going to be 30 here, and we have 15 here, 15 blue items. And then again, we're going to shuffle some of the remaining green. I, uh, I believe we said this was going to be two or three, two or three green items plus the 15 blue items from here is going to make our 16. So I believe that would be the solution. All right, perfect. We'll release and this will be the end of our gameplay portion of this video. If you want to hear more discussion about what we've seen in this episode, then feel free to stick around. Otherwise, you can skip to the next episode. Many of the tasks we did in this episode were about shuffling a certain number of inputs to designated output streams within a time constraint. None of these tasks had difficult classification problems or AI problems. The difficulty really only came from those time and number constraints. I don't believe this is a good representation of what data scientists actually do. Of course, data scientists often want to optimize the way they analyze data, 
but they don't generally have to make their processing go under a specific time or send exact numbers of their data to different outputs. So that seems to be just a mechanic made up for the game. Even in situations where you want to send exact number of data to specific outputs, usually you can just classify your data first and then out of the classified data pick out as many as you want to send wherever you want. In one of the tasks, the game mentioned making an AI that helps the Protoss manage their units on the battlefield. And that looks like a reference to StarCraft, where Protoss is one of the races that you can use to build units and fight on the battlefield. In fact, there is an AI that plays StarCraft, called Alpha Star, made by the company DeepMind. In January of 2019, they announced that Alpha Star had defeated a top-level human player, winning all games in a five-game tournament. And this was huge news in the StarCraft community. Funny enough, the AI did play as Protoss in that tournament. Now, this game, while True Learn, was released in March of 2018, which is before those results were announced. So I don't know if it was a coincidence, or if they had some knowledge or involvement in that project to put that reference in the game. So that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.